You are back on Cat Unwrapped, and that was Eskimo Joe with Black Fingernails Red Wine, and we heard a really old one from Eskimo Joe before that, Turn Up Your Stereo, and we have Cav Templey on the phone right, right on now. The phone. Hi, Cav. Hi, Cav. Hi, Cat. How you doing? How you I'm doing? good. You, doing? <laughs> you just heard what we've been playing, didn't you? Yeah, well, uh, turn up your stereo. That's that's pretty. That is quite old. I don't even. I've got a copy of that anymore. So. <laughs> well, actually, I did mention to you that I spoke to you way back when you released a song. Is this? Is, is, I can't speak now. You're making me nervous. A song is a city. <laughs> yeah, is the name of the record. And back in Geelong, when we used to do the show, that track, "Turn Up Your Stereo," was actually one of the opening tracks that we used for a few months on our show. That's hilarious. <laughs> but you've come a long way since that those days and sweater. I have. It's been it's been a merry merry long journey since then to now. So I think Turn Up Stereo came out in ninety nine and wow. like nineteen ninety nine and then uh not eighty nine or no. eighteen ninety nine obviously. <laughs> but um and then our last record came out in two thousand and thirteen. So yeah, there's been been a few years between drinks there. All right. Can I, like you are at the moment, of course, you're doing a solo tour to celebrate, I guess, the 10th anniversary of A Song is the City. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Is, yeah, yeah. Uh, is there a reason, like, are Eskimo Joe still going? Is, like, why are you doing it yeah, on your own? absolutely. Well, I mean, there's a couple of reasons. I mean, look, we just finished basically touring our, our last album, The Wastelands, and and I went into a little cafe in Fremantle in January, um, like I, before we'd even finished touring that. And I, I um, there's a little cafe called the X-Ray in Fremantle where I live. And they kind of let me go and set up and do whatever I want. And I, I went. Someone had mentioned to me that um, it was ten years since the Song of the City came out. And I was like, dang, ten years! I don't feel like that long. I still kind of mentally feel like that same person. <laughs> um, and so I decided to just go down to this cafe and, and play the album through from start to finish because we wrote the whole album like basically on an acoustic guitar. It had to work on an acoustic guitar or a piano or it didn't make the record. Mm-hmm. So I just like you know played through all the songs and I did a little tweet out to Eskimo Joe fans like you know come down if you if if you want to and about fifty fans came down on the day. And I just played the album through, and it was and it was so nice. And and I thought, you know, that that could be a fun thing to do. And then people started tweeting from over east, you know, mm. saying, "Oh, come here! Can you can you come here and do it?" And and then we finished the last bit of touring. And I just thought it was such a personal album for me that, um, you know, it would be good to go out and actually tell the stories behind the songs. And it's just not one of those things that I can kind of get away with with my band there because. I'd always just be standing behind me, drilling like holes into my back, and everyone was pretty keen to have a bit of a holiday because we work pretty hard. Even, even though, like, you might not see us in your town, like, we're kind of you know somewhere in the world or, or in Perth, working away doing our thing. Yeah. So I think everyone needed a bit of a sabbatical, and um, and I decided, you know, what the hey, I've never done a tour by myself, and this seems like the perfect album to do it. So I set off, and I said to the guys. Is it cool? Do you guys mind if I do that? And they were like, yeah, that's fine as long as you don't have like a backing band because that'd be a bit weird. <laughs> um, and here I am coming coming to the, is it the Corova Lounge? Yeah. On, yeah. on Saturday night, this coming Saturday, the 2nd yeah. of August. Yeah, that's right. Have you played Ballarat before with Eskimo Joe or anything? I have. Um, and I don't think we've played it for a few years. Um, yeah. We kind of, we seem to kind of like we played around you guys a couple of times <laughs> through, and did a tour um, called Flicks and the Sticks, which is really wicked, and um, which we play, we played just down the road from you guys. Mm. But um, yeah, we played. Um, it was basically kind of stripped down, you know, versions of Eskimo Joe songs, but we we did it at like this kind of short film festival, so it was a really cool, different idea. Um, but yeah, it's the first time in ages I've been in Ballarat, so hopefully everyone comes out to say hello. Yeah, well, uh, well, Saturday's not meant to be as cold as Friday anyway, so oh, that's a good so. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take this as our 10th anniversary too because I actually spoke to you for the release of A Song is a City. You did, and like, what are, what are some of the things that you remember about speaking to me then? Like, was I, was I like really cocky or was I like... No. Uh, like <laughs> I, I remember you were actually in Sydney and you were heading towards a train... And you told us a story about your girlfriend reading about a brain tumour from talking on mobile phones. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's the type of thing that I'd probably just yeah talk about useful <laughs> facts that have no linear line from one subject to the next. <laughs> and I do remember you told us too that you knew that you were going to have a band called Eskimo Joe before you had the band. Well, yeah, I'd thought about it. I, I went overseas um, and I, um, I kind of wrote to Stu when I was away and I just said, and I, you know, I kind of got every other... I, I was in a band, another band with Joel, and we were, we were doing this kind of like, 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 kind of like funk metal or something, which was the style of the times. <laughs> and, um, and I just, I wasn't really into playing that style of music. So and me and Stu had just been jamming, doing these kind of really folky kind of Pixies style songs. And um, and I said, oh, I think the stuff that we're writing is really good and we should form a band, you know. I didn't say, and we shall call it Eskimo Joe. <laughs> like that. I, just, I, um, I just was like, yeah, let's do it. And when I came back, um, Joel had said something to me which which pretty much sealed his fate. He was like, I would love to be in a band where, you know, you tell everyone what to do because I was writing all the songs. And, uh, you know, it didn't actually work out like that in any way, shape or form. In fact, Joel just tells us all what to do. But um, that, he, I, I was like, that sounds like a perfectly good reason to be in my band. If you're going to let me tell you what to do, you can be, you can be in my band. But of course, it became our band. And, and the great thing about when me, Stu and Joel got together um, is because me and Joel had been in another band. When you get the right chemistry of people together, you just know it straight away. It's, it's like that kind of age-old thing of when, you know, you ask someone why they're going to get married to someone. They're like, you know, I didn't know I was going to get married until I met the person I wanted to marry. And that's what it's, that was what it was like with Eskimo Joe. You know, we were just like, we knew that it was the right thing straight away. Awesome. Did you want to ask something, Fraser? I definitely did. I'm having, I've got to admit, I'm having a fangirl moment here. There's some teenage dreams <laughs> coming true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Black Fingernails Red Wine was in my car for a long, long time. Um, but, Excellent. like, 10 years is a long time for any band um, and longer with you guys. Did you ever think, starting out, that you'd get to this point? Um, I think we had a lot of, you know, blind faith and ambition. But, I mean, as we've gone along, we've kind of had, like, there's always challenges along the way. Like, we've kind of just you know, stuffed it up royally so many times. You know, these things that happen behind the scenes that you guys never get to see. But the, I, I think the only reason why we're still together as a band and will continue to be in the future is that as a bunch of guys, we get on really, really well and we laugh a lot. Even though we ha it, it's like a marriage and you do have, like, all kinds of... You know, the amount of meetings I've had to have about, like, people's feelings being hurt about different things. It's like, oh, I'm not another meeting. Mm -hmm. But um, but you do it, and it's, and it's the right thing to do because then, you you know, you, you communicate well and you stay together as friends. And the bands who stay together as friends and can kind of keep that connection going, I think, will always have a long lifetime. It, whether mm -hmm. I knew we were going to be together, I don't know. All I can say is that I knew straight away that I had a really good connection with, with the guys and that we were all... You know, like with an album, Black Thing and I was Red Wine, that was, that was the album after um, A Song of the City. Mm. And it was kind of like where everything came together, like all the stars aligned. And we'd, we'd got our songwriting technique down to, you know, and we were all pulling in the same direction when Black Thing and I was came out. So it was just one yeah. of those, those really kind of once in a career moments. Yeah. yeah I was right. just looking through the old disco discography on the Eskimo mm -hmm. Joe site and it's massive. You yeah. guys haven't stopped, have you? <laughs> No, we just kind of keep going. I mean, I've, I'm also, like, slightly insane and go and do, like, side projects between albums. Like, two albums ago, I did um, an album with a bunch of friends called The Basement Birds, which was oh, really yeah. thoroughly enjoyable. And I've I've been trying to convince the other Basement Bird guys to come back together to do another like, one of those records again, but it's pretty hard to coordinate all these people. And this year, um, everyone's going to have a bit of a holiday because, like, as you said, we're kind of, we've, we work pretty hard all the time. Mm. So everyone's going to have a holiday. And what am I going to do? I'm going to do a side project. I'm, I'm an idiot. I should, I should probably just, like, paint my house or just, like, you know, sit in the sun for a while. But, no, I, I write songs all the time, and, and sometimes they end up as Eskimo Joe songs, and sometimes, you know, I give them to other people to play, and sometimes I, you know, turn them into something else. Awesome. And as I mentioned to you at the start, too, we did talk to Catherine Rowlands a few weeks ago, and you produced her CD for her? You... Yeah, I've done the last two EPs with, with Catherine over quite a long period of time and she's, oh. um, I'm happy to say, kind of like going out and, you know, really taking control of it herself. But like, I, like I kind of first saw her play when she was about 19 
and and she just had this amazing voice and really really um, powerful lyrics as well. I think that's you know that kind of combination, that magical combination of someone who can really emote their their quality lyrics. I think is is something, and she's got that. So um, we did an EP together and then she moved to Melbourne and then we just um, worked on the last EP a bit. She worked with a few different people on the last EP, which I think is great. And, mm. um, and yeah, she's, I think it's just about to come out or, you know, just going yeah. to radio now. Is that's probably why you, you talk to her. So, yeah, yeah well, she's fantastic. Do you work with a few people behind the scenes like that? Um, I do. I work with lots of people behind the scenes, and this year in particular, I decided I actually made a bit of a decision that I wasn't going to like give all my songs away, and I might actually just like put out a solo album instead. Um, so uh, I, I do work with lots of people behind the scenes, but I've decided this year I'm going to work with less people behind the scenes and just record those songs myself. Right. And what's it like sitting up there on stage all on your own, doing your music acoustically? Well. I have to admit, like, I'm about eight gigs in to the, the Song of the City 10-year anniversary tour, and I, um, it was pretty scary on the first couple of nights. I was like to have a few little, little wines before I went on stage. <laughs> um, but uh, last weekend, it just, it just hit a really good spot. And, and for me, um, a lot of, you know, I can play the songs. I can sit there with an acoustic guitar and, and sing and play. Like, I don't have a problem with that. But um, it's about telling the story, and it was really important for me with this album especially to tell the, the stories behind, behind it and not be kind of, like, gross about it and be like, Dear Diary, this is what happened, you know? Like, I, I wanted to still keep a little bit of mystery and be a little bit of a gentleman about some of the stories, but um, but it was it was really nice to, um, I think, last weekend I, I, I felt... I think you guys are actually seeing it probably at the best time, you know? You're in the middle of the tour, so I've just kind of got it together. I'm playing the songs well. The stories are, are all kind of rich and filled with a good yarn. <laughs> and um, and I'm not, like, completely exhausted because I've been touring it for three months or something. So you yeah. guys get it at a good point. And you you will actually be at the Northcote Social Club on Friday night on the 1st of August correct. as well. Correct. For the diehard fans, they can go to, go to both gigs if they like. And Geelong, too, on the Sunday night at Beeb's Bar. That's right, yep, that's going to mm. be great. And then you're heading off to Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia, Tasmania, W... Oh, of course, you're finishing off in your yeah, hometown, sure. home state, not it's town. Actually, there's actually more gigs. We're doing more... Uh, well, we. I keep saying we. It's only me. <laughs> um, I, there's, I've been doing more gigs on this tour than I have for a long time, I guess, my joke, because as we got bigger as a band, like post Black Fingernails especially... Um, we would just do these big shows in the city and everyone kind of ha- would have to come in and, and see us play, which is, which will probably continue like that. But um, it's nice to go into a lot of these venues that I don't, wouldn't normally get to play with Eskimo Joe. It's quite a different experience. And for me, yeah. like, part of the thing is, is I, like I, everyone who comes to the shows, I've, I've recorded a little acoustic EP. All just right. of uh, songs that inspired me, you know, like so covers, but like you know, me playing them, um, covers of songs that inspired a song as a city and so everyone gets that with the ticket price and, I, and I've been coming out afterwards and just chatting to everyone and hearing their stories and and some of them are like you know young younger crew who were like you know I got into this when I was 13 and never got to see any of the shows and this is the first time I've you know I've seen you guys do Eskimo Joe but I've never heard a lot of these songs live and then there's people who are like you know we bought this when it came out and we fell in love to it as we like driving across Australia like I love that stuff it's really great and because I think, you know, obviously there's songs like From the Sea that I've, that I've played every, every single time since, every, you know, since I've written it. But, um, uh, but there's a lot of songs that I haven't played for a long time. So, and when you, when you play an album for the first time, you take it so seriously. It's like, I've got to get this right. This song's a hit. I hope everyone likes it. You know, so going back now, I get to actually just kind of play it and, and relax and just listen to it a bit as I play it. And so to hear everyone's stories and stuff and to tell my stories is kind of part of the whole thing. Well, that was your debut album, wasn't it? No, it was our second album. Oh, right. We had an album before that called Girl. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Um, That's you right. know, which, which was, it was quite an indie indie record. But, um, but yeah, I think A Song of the City was where it started to, you know, the mainstream started to take a bit of notice of it, yeah. Well, I did mention to someone the other day, actually, that a lot of bands like you started off with, you know, quite punky I guess and just a fun little band 
and you yep. your sound has matured in that and people let you do that whereas a lot of people say oh no they've changed style bugger them you know but mm. people seem to have let you mature your sound and gone with you well yeah well I, i'm sure we kind of like i mean the, our last album wasteland was completely different again for us and we do it to keep keep it entertaining for ourselves but i'm sure we lose a few fans and then gain a couple of fans every time we do that i think and, it, and it's a yeah. risk you take as a band and um you know you could probably cite some bands like coldplay as an example who you know they've kind of been able to experiment a bit more in, in recent years but they pretty much stuck to their guns being coldplay and it made them the biggest band in the world um we were we grew up you know listening to the beatles and and those kinds of bands who always seem to evolve in their sound all the time. So that's, we kind of feel like it would be a cop-out to go in and make the same record twice. Hmm. So we're really lucky that fans have stayed with us over the years, but I don't think we will ever go back and try and recreate a moment, you know? Like, I think we've just got to keep moving forward all the time, otherwise we're dead in the water. Do you think you will do that with the... the um Black Fingernails Red Wine CD when that turns 10? Doing it, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll have to do that as a band if we do it. I'm sure we'll have to do something. I mean, who knows Who knows where where we'll be at. Like, we might be wanting to do a new record by that stage. So, But um, I hope the guys would be into doing something like that because I think um, there's something, you know, pretty special about that record as well as, as A Song of the City. I mean, A Song of the City is a much more personal album for people and it was the last album that, we got to, um, I guess I got to really wear my heart in my sleeve because after that it, it, it became a bit of a bigger thing. And mm-hmm. I think with Black Thing and Owls with Red Wine, you can you can hear the smoke and mirrors starting to come into it a little bit. There's a bit more distance between me and the storyline, whereas, you know, you go back one album to A Song of the City and it's really personal. Everything's, like, very confessional. Awesome. It sounds like it's going to be a great show. People can go yeah, to... Yeah, well... Sorry, go on. Yeah, you go on. So. I was going to say they can go to cavtemporally.com.au and you've got your tour dates and that up there. That's right, yeah. You can get some tickets there or just go to the venue. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I guess people should definitely go and check out eskimojo.net and you Correct. are Cav yep. Temporally on Facebook as well. That's right. Come and- at you from all angles. <laughs> well... Before I do let you go, can I ask you then, like the kid that did start out with Eskimo Joe and from everything that's happened to you since, what's the one thing that you think you would not believed would have happened? Like what's that moment that you thought like, wow? <laughs> um, I think, um, well, for me more being able to have a family and and support my family as a musician and and you know keep doing it there's this there's this kind of myth that destruction and and creation have to be kind of part of the same parcel in in music and art in general and i mean no doubt that that it has its place but it's certainly not a maintainable thing and i think a lot i've seen a lot of my friends burn out through the years because they kind of believe in me and for me um i don't know if i ever really thought that i would you know be able to kind of just keep doing what i'm doing and and, and have a family and, and have that kind of balance between those things. That's probably been the most, um, that most part I've been most impressed with myself on the <laughs> Would you encourage your children into the music industry? Um, I think I would like them to do whatever they want to do. I, I really would love to, for them to play music as a social thing because I think it's the best fun you can have with your friends is playing music. Hmm. You know, like... It's, I was talking to um, some people the other day and we were talking about hobbies that people have outside of music. I don't actually have any hobbies. I just, like, <laughs> it's kind of a weird kid obsession, but I just, like, whenever I'm writing a record, like, you know, if it's, if it's a really kind of, like, our last record was kind of almost this electro kind of dancey thing. Um, and so I would go home and write all these acoustic songs because I felt like that was being naughty. You know, like, so, so I think with my kids, like, I think I would just want them to, to have fun with music because it it's such a joy and, you, like, I always think I'm going to get in trouble because I have so much fun doing what I do for a living. Um, <laughs> but I, and I, I think with them, but I, I kind of secretly hope that they'll have, like, some other focus outside of music because all I do is music and I love it and it's and I'm lucky that, that I earn a living out of it, but I, 
I think it's good to have more than one thing in your life. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you spend so much time working with other artists, because it makes you feel more Probably. normal. <laughs> well, maybe, yeah. I think I just do it because it's actually really good fun. Yeah. It's undeniably a really fun way to spend your time. Well, that sounds great, and I think people should definitely get out and catch you on your solo tour for A Song Is The City, and you'll be in Victoria this weekend, Friday at the Northcote Social Club, Saturday at Corova Lounge, and Sunday in Geelong at Beeves Bar. And Correct. I look forward to hearing some of those stories, because I know you're a good storyteller. I re- I remember, <laughs> I've never forgotten the story about the the spider thing in the head <laughs> over the mobile phones. <laughs> Are you on a mobile phone right now? I am, I don't, and I don't have a spider web cancer yet. So <laughs> <I've heard> <laughs> well, 10 years, surely they'd start showing up by now. <laughs> <laughs> and can I ask actually quickly, is that girlfriend now your wife, is she? No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> that girlfriend was the girl who I wrote um, the first two records about and then subsequently kind of broke up with unfortunately that's because she was always telling you about cancer and stuff and you <laughs> need to hear Possibly. that you've got to do interviews at your job <laughs> yeah I've, I've survived to tell the tale All good. <laughs> thank you very much and i look forward to seeing you saturday night Absolutely. at Corova lounge excellent have a good thank night you, and, Fraser. and we are going to actually night. play from the sea by Eskimo okay. Joe right now. Good, let's do it. Thanks, bye. Thanks very much. Bye bye.